We're going to uh, get started with our warm up. And so I invite you to come into a standing position so that as we stand, we got room around us, we got our mats laid out, we got other things available in case we need them. Although in, in class today, uh, I don't have anything really planned that we would absolutely need a, uh, any prop or anything like that. But if you have a block available, if you have bolsters or other things available, uh, then, then that is great to have a, a, for use within the class. But as we begin, we begin in a standing position and, uh, and feet about hip distance. And we just start a little spinning action. This is one of my favorite ways to warm up because it, uh, you know, I was, I was just standing there not noticing how tight certain areas of me are. And of course we are on a moving, we're a moving target. We are responding to either the activity or the sedentary behaviors that we've had for the, the last 48 hours, really. So the things we do don't immediately affect us. Sometimes they, they have a little bit of a, a time span before we, we notice the full effect. And so here we are twisting and turning and some things are very quick to loosen up and other things are a little bit resistant. But we get a bit of action going and then we just let that cycle down and then we create a new action. We lift the arms up and we just throw them down. So up and down action with those arms, feeling the shoulder shift, feeling the action, noticing if there's any warning signs in our body that something's up, something's going on and that we really need to protect ourselves. So just make sure that you're feeling very comfortable in the actions and if there's something that's alerting you to an issue well you're just gonna you're just gonna modify that now make some softness happen in those knees take the weight back to the heels lift your feet up and lose your balance a little bit so you know go towards your toes a lot of times people do this and i don't see them losing their balance and i would tell you that you, you benefit more if you make yourself lose your balance now don't fall all the way down that's not necessary but if we if we startle our body effect if we create a, a situation where the body's having to react and respond we typically do a lot better with that. So crouching is the response we want. Put one foot forward, take the weight to the toes, let your knees go into a bend, go back to the heels, let the knees go into a bend. And so we're creating an action that's causing us to feel a little bit of loss of balance. And that's exactly right. That's what it takes to make the body change. We've got to give it a little bit of provocation. Let's put the other foot forward. That's the point where we feel either tightness in the muscle, loss of balance, or a muscle getting tired. We need that provocation in order for change to occur. Good, all right, now let's stand. Let us make movement in the foot. Let the weight come to the inner edge, lifting up your outer edge. Take that weight to the outer edge, lift the inner edge. So we get very disconnected in ourself because we're just not recognizing all of the alignments that we should have. And one of the alignments is all the way down there in the feet. We just take it for granted that our feet are doing these things. We shove them into shoes. We've been disconnected from them since babyhood when we first started to wear shoes. So let's go ahead and balance across the ball with footing at the center of the heel. We push the heels away. And there's not really a movement. What happens is we engage all this muscle structure all the way up into the hip. But we are going to move the toes. We're going to lift our toes up and we're going to pull our fingers back. We're going to stretch our hands and the bottom of the feet. We're going to squeeze those toes down, wrinkle them down into the mat. We're going to take our fingers and grip into the top part where the finger joins in the palm. This is a classic way of warming up the hands and the feet, the, the forgotten areas of the body, the areas that we just don't spend a lot of time on because we're too busy either using them in the case of our hands or just sort of forgetting we have them in the case of our toe. Spread apart, those fingers and those toes go wide open and then we squeeze them together tight. And here's the thing, when you're looking down at the toes, you're wide open spread. There may not be a lot of visible mat between those toes until you've been working at this for quite some time. So keep working, keep working to create that wideness. And then try and move your big toes towards each other, but it might be a little bit of time before you truly feel that you've got movement that is expected in those toes, that's okay. Keep your heels pressing out and the balance across the ball of the foot, but we're gonna lift up the little toe side those toes, I should say, not the little toe side of the foot, just the toes, little toes up. And those little toes are gonna to go down, heels push out, we're gonna lift up big toe up and down. And then finally, we're gonna do a little extra credit practice, the big toe down, the little toe down, and the three center toes are lifting up and down. Just trying to get activity where there is a lot of absence of mind presence. So that when we stand now, we're on a more secure, more appropriate arch to our foot. And we'll just pull our hips back and we'll lengthen our spine, chest lifting up and we'll let those shoulders come back and come down. And as we stand like this with our uplifted posture, 
We're going to uplift our arms. We're going to inhale and lift the arms up. And then we're going to exhale and let the arms spread and come slowly down. Now, the movement that you're creating is one where you want to, the second time at least, go into a point where you're feeling some stretch and you're becoming aware of anything in the body that might be a resistance that is increasing in discomfort. And that's a warning sign. That's us take care of those areas. So each time we do this, we open up a little bit, but we also find the barriers to movement. We find our both soft stretch points and our hard don't go there points. Let's take the arms to one side. Let's bring the arms across. We're going to inhale, lifting, and then we'll exhale, we'll come out and down. Now, the movement that we're creating is not just for the shoulders. It is warming up the joint structures of the neck and the upper back and the lower back too. Exhaling, and then we're going to go the other way. We're going to breathe in and then exhale across and down. And then we do that again, inhale, and then we exhale. And that's great. Now, we're going to bring those arms up. Now, we're going to lift up the center of our spine. We're going to lift up the side of our chest. We're going to stretch our arms slowly and gently until we get a full stretch, inhaling, and exhale, let go. Because there's a lot of body parts. There's the spine we lift. There's the rib, rib cage we lift. And then there's the arm of fibers band from shoulder all the way to the pelvis stretching, too. Exhale, let that go. But we'll do it again. We'll lift the center and the side. And we'll stretch that arm up and inhale, exhaling. We'll lift the center, we'll lift the ribs, we'll stretch the arm all the way, we'll inhale, and we'll exhale, we'll take that down, we'll take our hands, interlocking them, stretching out the palms, bringing the chest and the arms up. We're gonna lift ourselves up and begin a spiral slowly up, lifting and lengthening as we go, all the way from legs to chest, inhale, exhale, let it go, and then we uplift, and then we spiral up and we reach and we stretch legs all the way to the hips and fingers. Inhale, exhale, let that go. Now we're gonna create length. So we're gonna lift the chest and create more length. We're gonna lift our arms up. And while we remain long, we're going to arch back and inhale. And then exhale, let those arms come down and sway. Now bring your chest up. Squeeze back your shoulder blades and reach the arms back and exhale. That's going to feel like some action between those shoulder blades. So let the shoulders go forward. Make the space between the shoulder blades very broad. Inhale. You're going to feel a stretch. And then we reach and we squeeze back and we exhale. We take the shoulders forward. Good place to breathe in is that space in between the shoulder blades. We've got some respiratory muscles there. Again, the reach, the squeeze back, the exhale. We let those arms release apart. Now, we're going to spread our feet out to about the width of the mat, and we're going to begin to twist and turn. Now, when we do that, at the first of class we did that, we might already be feeling that they're a little looser. Things are starting to change a little bit. But we're going to isolate. We're going to get to the deeper layer. So we're going to uplift. I'm going to turn our shoulders, trying to limit or completely remove any movement happening in the structure of the pelvis. So the uplift makes sure we don't grind our joints across each other, and the limitation of movement, the specific nature of our movement, isolates muscles. And this is a key thing to our yoga. We've got to isolate. We've got to move in very specific, very conscious ways. Uplift, and then we're going to make the pelvis move one side and then the other side. And so we're going to move not the shoulders, but we move below the waist. And the mind has to connect there. Good. Now push your feet and your knees outward like you're stretching apart the mat. This engages the outer hip. Pull in that core nice and firm. Lift your chest, bring your shoulders down, and let your body tilt to the side. Now as you're tilting, keep your legs active so your pelvis stays in center. Lift your chest and the arm up, stretching that side. Take a deep breath. And on your exhale, pull yourself up to bring yourself out. We do it again. We press out. Our belly's in, the chest up and shoulders down. We begin the tilt. We lift the chest and the arm, stretching upward. We take a deep inhale, and we exhale, and we lift ourselves up, and we come out. Now, we're going to take our feet nice and wide. And when we spread the feet, we keep the arch to the foot, and we bend the knees a little bit so we create this crease line. We're going to lift the chest up and put the heel of the palm in that crease, bending forward, keeping the hands up high. And on one side, we begin to straighten the elbow. Now, as we're working to make that arm more straight, we're, our goal is to stretch the spine, not to necessarily get the arm completely straight. Take a deep inhale, exhale, let that elbow bend, and then we'll try the other side. 
The more straight we make the arm, the longer we have to make the spine. Let's take a deep inhale. Exhale, that elbow bends, and then both sides. As we press, as we work to straighten both arms, we traction our spine more fully. Take a deep inhale, and then exhaling, bend your elbows, bend your knees, bring your hands all the way down. Now shift your weight to one side, and as you do that, you'll straighten the other leg so you'll feel an inner stretch. And if you don't feel any inner stretch here, you probably need to move your foot a little further out there. Keep comfortable and breathe deeply. We're not trying for anything intense. And then we'll go across the other way, straighten the other leg, and again, our goal is to feel a little stretch in this inner thigh region, breathing deep. We'll go to the first side again. Hips could be higher or lower, whichever you prefer. Deep breathing. And then across we go once more, keeping a deep breath. And we're gonna to come to center and let the hips lift up, and that will begin a stretch that goes into the back leg, but the bend of the knee controls it. And once you're in a stretch, just let the head and the arms hang, so you decompress. And if you like, sway side to side with the head and the shoulders to add a little bit of variation to that stretch. Now at center, we're gonna put one hand down, we'll bring the other shoulder up and toward the back to twist. We're gonna press out into the feet, lengthen and breathe. And if you're wanting even more stretch, you can take that arm up, stretching and breathing. And then we're gonna go the other way, hand down. We'll bring the shoulder up and toward the back, pressing out the feet, lengthening chest away and maybe taking the arm up with a further stretch. Breathing in deep. And then we're coming back to center. Now we're gonna bend our knees and place our hands on those knees and lift our chest up. We've changed the angle, which will change the stretch. Reach your shoulder toward the other side slowly. And that elongation is gonna pull into multiple areas. Shoulder, rib cage, low back, pelvis, inner thigh, etc. We come to center and we go the other way. Just start taking some deep breaths because we're also elongating that lung field. To the first side again, reach across. Inhale so much you have to open your ribs up wide to accept it. Exhale into center, reach across, and once again, inhale, open those ribs up wide. Exhaling, come on to center, bend your knees and come on up. Okay, so we've done a lot of work, and this is working to make our body ready for the sun salutes. But in the sun salute, there's gonna be a lot of choices that we'll make that will individualize. The, uh, the action that we create, and that's going to make it either more or less intense for you. And so you create the amount of intensity that seems right, adapt, modify, or avoid things that just don't seem to work for you today. So we're going to stand at one end of our mat, we'll call that the front end, and we'll be stepping our leg back to the other direction in our actions. Start with that beautiful arch in your foot, and good posture too, hips back, spine lifting, shoulders back and down, chin level, head lifting, we breathe in, lift the arms, and as we begin our exhale, we grab our elbows and bend our knees and bring our chest down. And we want to make as much length through the front of the body as we bend and let the head and the arms tilt forward to decompress the spine. Speaking of bend, we're going to bend our knees enough, the back and leg stretch is adjusted to just right feel. As the head and the arms hang, you can add variation, just swaying the head and shoulders side to side. But the goal here is a comfortable, relaxing stretch with another deep breath. And as you exhale, Placing down hand, step your right foot back, it's in to lunge with the left knee over the ankle, that shin, a perpendicular line. We lift the right hip, we bring the balance to the ball of the right foot, so the heel reaching back stretches the calf evenly, and the chest and shoulders pulling forward stretch the spine. The left foot holds a good arch. We're going to use a light pressure on the hands, or if you want more intensity, one or both arms stretch forward. Take a deep breath, exhale, and let your hands flatten, and step back in your plank, and pull in the belly firm and tight. As you lengthen, your chest reaching forward, your hips and heels stretching back. Take a deep inhale and exhaling, softly lower those knees and move the hips back and toward the heels, letting the elbows come down, letting the forehead come all the way down and keep your breathing focused in your belly. But you can vary this by swaying the shoulders from side to side. And that will add a little bit more stretch into the ribs and into the line of the shoulders. Breathing deeply. We'll come forward, the elbows are under those shoulders now, and the hips can sway side to side to change that stretch into the hips and lower back. And if you prefer, you can bring those knees right close to each other and do the pivot, the side to side, which will increase the action in those oblique abdominal muscles. Very good, we're gonna flatten the top of the foot, press hands evenly, and come forward and into upward dog. The shoulders traveling forward and the wrist, as we lift the collarbones and sink the hips comfortably. Press hands and feet evenly, pull up the collarbones and inhale. And then on exhale, we'll move back to downward dog. So lift hips and push your chest toward your thighs with your palms evenly flat 
and those thumbs gently pulling toward the feet. Your head's between the arms and you can gaze at the, the top of the foot. Bring balance to the ball of the foot and then lift up your heels and bend your knees. Lift your hips higher and push your chest steadily toward your thighs as you keep the shoulders nice and broad. And if you like, you can paddle one heel at a time down to increase the stretch in the back of the leg. Keep your breathing very deep. And on this exhale, we step the right foot forward to the lunge, putting the ankle under our knee. We're gonna lift up the left hip, balance ball the foot, heel reaches back, chest and shoulders pull forward, right foot holds the arch. It's either light pressure of the hands or one or both arms reach forward. Take a deep breath. We exhale, we step forward, our feet hip distance. Now press into those heels firm, bend those knees, keep your belly tight and inhale up from the squat. And exhale. Inhale up. Exhaling, grabbing elbows, bending knees, chest coming down. But this time, elbows are both forward of the shins. We fold the hands, our head rests, we bend the knees. We press into the legs. This lets us move our ribs toward our knees and lengthen our spine. And while we're doing that, we pull our shoulders and shoulder blades toward our hips to release our neck. We press our feet and our knees steadily outward, engaging the outer hips. We also breathe deeply focused into that upper back shoulder blade breath. Deep inhale. Exhaling now, placing down the hands. It's left foot stepping back now. And that lunge becomes a side angle. So we roll the left heel down, lift the left shoulder, and we'll bring the right elbow up on the knee for now. Keep the hips centering to the left and right on that, and move your right knee toward the right edge. You can change that outer hip, and then lengthen that right side, pulling that shoulder away from the hip. You want good arches, so feel the left foot's little toe to heel edge pressing. And if you want a little more challenge, bring that left arm behind the back to lift the shoulder higher. And if you want even more intensity, just take that right arm and reach it forward. Take a deep breath. And on the exhale, flattening hands, step back in a plank and pull the abdomen in firm and tight as you lengthen the chest going forward and hips and heels stretching back. Inhale. Exhaling softly, lower down the knees. Hips move back toward heels, elbows and forehead coming down. But we're going to walk our right hand more forward. We're going to bring the ribs slightly past the knee. Flatten your palm and sway your ribs over to the right. So you're bowing the rib cage outward, and there's a stretch. Breathe to the right side. We, we tell our body how to breathe by using certain muscles. So we're expanding the rib cage on the right. That's going to work those respiratory muscles, but it's also going to loosen the joints, making it easier to expand, and it's going to stretch the right structure of the lung to allow us a more full and more deep breath. Exhaling, the chest comes to center, the hands even, and now left hand, we walk it forward a bit, palm flattens, we sway the ribs to the left for that stretch feel, and every breath is now focused to the left. And each time you inhale, you'll feel that slight resistance, the, the joints learning how to move, the muscles learning how to contract, and the filling of that lung, teaching the lung structure how to be very pliable. Exhaling, chest comes to center and hands even. Now we're gonna come forward to upward dog. So gradually bring shoulders forward to the wrist, lift the collarbones as you sink down the hips. Hand and foot pressure is even, lift the collarbones even more. Inhale, and then exhale back, downward dog, with tips in, push the chest toward the thighs. Palms evenly flat, thumbs pulling toward the feet and head between the arms. Keep the balance to the ball of the foot, lift your heels. Bend your knees, lift your hips, push your chest steadily toward thighs, and now we activate. We're pulling the shoulders and shoulder blades toward the hips to bring action to our lats. We keep that happening. We press our hands and elbows toward each other. That's pectoral work. And when we make it wide between the shoulder blades, that's serratus anterior. So these muscles stabilize us. We're going to keep them lifting and acting. And we're going to lift our hips and push our chest toward our thighs. And if we want, we can even paddle those heels up and down again. Breathing deeply. And now left foot steps forward to the lunge position. We go from lunge to side angle. So the right heel goes down, right shoulder lifts up, and the left elbow comes up and on the knee. Now the hips stay centering to the mat, and we move the left knee toward the left as we lengthen the left side shoulder away from the hip. We feel that right foot, little toe to heel edge firm against the floor. We can bring the right arm behind our back to lift the shoulder higher. And for intensity, we can take that left arm forward. Take a deep breath. And then on exhale, we step forward, feet hip distance. Press down those heels, belly tight, bend the knees, inhaling up from the squat. And exhale. Now bring the hands to the prayer position. Take a deep breath in. 
And exhale, push down. Inhale, bring the chest up and arch back. Exhale, forward bend. Right foot back, bring your right knee down. Inhaling, lift chest up and arch back. And exhale into plank. Inhale, knees rest and hips back. Exhaling, the chest and the chin rest forward. Inhaling, upward dog. Exhaling, downward dog. Right foot forward, left knee down. Inhaling, chest up and arching back. Exhale, forward bend. Inhaling up and arching back. Exhale. Hands prayer position, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, up, arch back. Exhale, forward bend. Left foot back, knee down, chest up, inhale, arch back. Exhale, plank. Inhale, knees rest, hips back. Exhale, chest and chin rest forward. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Left foot forward, right knee down. Inhale up, arching back. Exhale, step forward. Inhaling up, arching back. Exhale. Inhaling up. Exhale forward. Now right foot steps back lunge, we're going to stay balanced on the ball of the foot. We don't step too far back because we can keep the right knee bent and bring the chest all the way up. Modified warrior pose. We want to tighten the right seat muscle. We want to pull in the core. We want to lift the chest and maybe an ever so slight tuck under of the tailbone. You can stay like this with the chest and the arms reaching. And if you want more intensity of it, you can find a way to bring the knee down. You can do it just once. Or you could have a second scoop. Or maybe even do that third time. And then we're going to bring our hands in the plank position, stepping back, lengthening chest forward and hips and heels back. And now we're going to lower our knees down and pull the elbows in as we lower the chest to the chaturanga position, protecting those shoulders. And then upward dog. And now chaturanga. And then downward dog. Shoulders toward hips, hands and elbows toward each other, wide between shoulder blades. You can paddle the heels down and up. You can switch weight to the right foot, lifting the left foot up, maybe stretching that left leg up, breathing deeply. And then the left foot can come down, shifting weight to the left, bending the right knee, maybe stretching the right leg up, deep breath. And then the right foot coming down. We step now our right foot forward, so it's lunge, a full lunge, a really stable lunge, because that's our platform for other poses. So once we get our lunge, we're going to go to side angle. We're going to roll the left heel down and then reach that left arm forward. Left ankle reaching away from left wrist. Now your arm could stay down. If you wanted to bring that arm up, that'd be perfectly fine too. Deep breathing, hips in the center, right knee toward that right edge. Now we're going to transition. We're going to point that left arm toward the ceiling and slowly straighten the right leg. Now you can leave the hand lower, take it anywhere up on the leg you want for your triangle pose. But be sure that your shoulders and your hips are staying lined up and you're lengthening the side of you that's closest to the floor. Breathing deeply. Now bend your right knee over your ankle and start to pull backward through the left arm. Bring your chest all the way up, warrior two. Bring the chest up, drop the shoulders down. Make a strong, even reach through both arms. And keep your right knee. Pull to the right. Tighten up those seat muscles. Pull in that core. Lift your chest up. Strong action. And then lift the arms and turn forward. But leave that left heel down in this warrior one. 
Tighten those seat muscles. Keep your right knee to the right. Pull in your core. Make strong lift and inhale. And then exhale. Come into your lunge and step forward. Inhale up and exhale. Inhale up. Exhale forward. Now we're going to step our left foot back, but not too far. We're going to balance on the ball of the foot and then that left knee and lift the chest up into this version of Modified Warrior One. We're going to tighten up our seat muscles, pull in the core, maybe even flatten the back, tucking the tailbone slightly. We're going to link the chest, lifting. We're going to take those arms. We're going to stretch them upward. It's great to stay like this. One little more intensity. We're going to bring that knee down and up. It's going to feel different one side versus the other. And we can do it a second time. And we can do it a third time. Keep that breathing deep. I'm going to bring the arms down now into our plank position. Stepping back, tightening up the abdomen, chest reaching forward, hips and heels back. And then the knees come down first. We pull the elbows toward the center as we lower into Chaturanga. And upward dog. Chaturanga. And downward dog. Breathing deeply, shoulders toward hips, hands and elbows toward each other, wide between the shoulder blades, patting the heels, up and down, always possible, or shifting weight to the left. You can lift the right foot, stretch the right leg up, breathing deeply. Right foot can come down, shifting weight to the right, stretching left leg up, breathing deeply. Left foot can come down. Now, Step your left foot forward, make a really nice stable lunge so that's your platform for now side angle. Right heel goes down, right shoulder lifts up, right arm's gonna reach forward, wrist away from that right ankle, or elbow could go up on the knee on that left side or down to the floor. Hips centering to the mat, push that left knee toward the left and make that length between the right wrist and the right ankle. And then we transition to triangle. We point the right arm up first, and then we begin to straighten that left leg, bring the hand whatever height up on the leg and leading it down low. Let the hips stay in the center, the shoulders and hips lining up with each other. We pull the chest toward the ceiling, but also lengthen the side of the body that's closest to the floor, breathing deeply. Now bend the left knee over that ankle and pull backward with the right arm. Bring your chest all the way up with the vigil. Chest up, shoulders strongly down, arms reach strongly and evenly away from each other. Tighten those seat muscles, keep hips in the center, left knee toward the left. Lift that chest up, strong action. And then take the arms and stretch upward, turning forward to warrior one with the right heel staying down. Seat muscles tight, left knee to the left. Belly in, long spine inhale. Exhale, coming into the lunge and step forward. Inhale up and exhale. And that's good. Now we're warmed up. Let's stretch our spine again. Take those feet wide. Create a little bend. Lift the chest and shoulders up, heel the palm high up and tilt forward. On your right side, notice the straightness of the arm, the length of the spine. You're able to create now that you're warmed up. Take a deep inhale. Exhale, that elbow bends. And now the left side, we begin to straighten it, we lengthen, we take a deep inhale. Exhale, the elbow bends. And now both sides. We push, we straighten those arms, we traction that spine, we take a deep breath. And then we exhale, we bend the elbows, we bend the knees, we come up out of that. It's a long spine, very important. Now a lot of yoga is about defending the appropriate neutral line of the spine, keeping the spine long, keeping the pelvis in place, keeping the action where we want the action to be. And that's especially true about this series of actions I'm gonna ask us to go to. But remember, these next few things that we do, there's always an adaptation or a modification that will fit you just right. So we're using a pose that's a one leg forward, forward bend, it's known as Prasthottanasana. And the action is really great for a hamstring release, but we're gonna take it even further and do a few things with it. So what I want you to do is to be on your mat so that your pelvis will face this front edge. And that's typically our feet across from each other, perfectly fine, easy to do. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna step our right leg backward. Now I don't step it so far back that the right side of my pelvis pulls back. Instead, 
and keep my pelvis facing that front edge of the mat, both sides of the pelvis parallel to the front edge. And we're going to keep that alignment, but we're also going to tell our body to make this line between our kneecap and our hip here in front tight. And we do that just by pulling the kneecaps up, tightening the quadricep line, and that's going to help us release the hamstring. Now we're also going to lengthen by lifting the rib cage up and engage the core fully. So you right now should already be feeling activity in the body. And we're not moving yet, but we're really doing our yoga. Press down into your heels. That will help you engage your legs. Use your hands to help you lift more and just bend forward. Be gradual. Notice the effect on that front leg. The thigh may begin to soften like melting butter. Try and keep the contraction topmost in your mind. Remember, it's your control of your body is your goal in yoga. Keep the action here in the front and keep the length in the front of the body. Don't think you're going to go further down by releasing your back. Keep your body in a beautiful neutral position. Don't let the side of the pelvis pull back. Keep it pointed toward the front of the mat. And there will be, you know, restrictions and it's okay. And we just hold on. We just notice where we're at. Now, this is a part one. And the second part is where we go into a more passive stretch. So let's bend the left knee a little bit and send the hands down the leg until we're coming down here. And if you have some blocks, you could use those or your hands can come here. So because I'm getting a bend. If you need to bend the, the back leg, you can, but typically that leg's fine being straight. Now at this point, I just want to create a very mild stretch in the back of this front left leg, just by straightening the leg only slightly. My rib is totally against the leg. I'm not rounding. My body weight is transferred on the leg as well. And as long as I don't make this stretch too intense, then I'm doing some good resetting of muscle length indicators. But we're going to take this a little bit further. We're going to spread our arms a little forward and fairly wide. And we're going to start to take more and more of our weight onto that left foot, lifting the right heel up. Hands can even be further forward and further wide. We can lift the right foot up. We can even stretch the right leg slowly up. It is going to be a balance. And we'll lift the right leg up comfortably high, and we'll bend that left leg to adjust the stretch. And we'll just breathe nice and deep, deep inhale. And then on the exhale, we're going to bring the right foot. We're going to put it down next to the left foot in a forward bend with the knees bent. Press down those heels, belly tight. Those part way up. We've been down for a little while, so belly tight become the rest of the other. If we pause as we're coming out of that, it's not as much of a change to the blood pressure when we come up. So it's like, oh, there was a lot going on there. So let's now do the second side. So on side two, here again, we're starting with the... Uh, pelvis facing that front edge of the mat, and we're going to step our left foot backward. That's going to be the right leg that's going to be in a stretch position, and it may be very different. But remember, don't let your pelvis pull back and pay attention. What you might have done easily on one side may be a strong concentration to gain the action on the other side. So the pelvis faces the front edge of the mat. We're making tight, pulling the kneecaps firm to the front of our thigh. This quadricep muscle group is becoming active. Now we're going to lengthen chest lifting and those thighs stay tight and the low back stays in its slight curve toward the navel as we start to come forward and all those things remain. But it's hard to keep the thighs contracting as we bend forward the body. The moment you start to bend forward, it says, oh, we should turn off those thighs, right? It's like, no, keep that line on. <laughs> lengthen the front of the body, the side that's coming closer to the floor. Make sure that low back curve is still there. Keep long, keep, keep thighs active and don't go any further. Don't let that pelvis pull back. It's going to want to keep it forward and accept the limitations of your current condition and just breathe into it because that's the first thing we got to do when we make change. We've got to accept, we've got to identify where we're starting. And that's okay because this is just part one and we're going to bend our right knee. We're going to bring our hands down the leg and bring our hands near that foot. And right now, we're just adjusting to a comfortable stretch in this right front leg. And we can straighten the knee and make it stronger or bend the knee. Don't punish yourself for being tight. Just accept that you're tight. You may have to bend the knee a lot to take the tightness out of that leg if you're very, very tight, or put yourself up on blocks in order to accommodate to a super tight leg. And it's okay, whatever we're finding, it's just us. We're okay. So right now, we're just letting the body know that, hey, this is tight. We want to reset the muscle length indicators a little bit. And then, if you want, you can take it a little further. You take the hands out a little further and wider. You start to transfer weight onto that right foot. You can just leave it with your left toes touching. It's very hard to balance. Hands even wider and more forward. You can take the left foot up off the floor and maybe stretch the left leg up. But I'll tell you, if you're not expecting the legs to be different from each other, hey, here's some news for you. They are. Breathe deeply. 
keep a comfortable amount of action. Breathe into the action. One more deep breath. And then on this exhale, we're going to swing that left leg down. We're just going to put it parallel to the right foot into a forward bend, knees bending, belly tight. We're going to lift part way up, elbows on the knees, pull forward. Keep that belly tight so you block the return of blood downward. And then you can come up out of that and you won't feel woozy when you come up that way. Yeah, pretty nice. Oh, but I'd like to do it again. I'd like to do it again. Remember, uh, set it up so that you're doing the part that you think is the most valuable to you, that you're not challenging yourself and making yourself miserable with the action. So let's do this again. So as we stand, pelvis facing front edge, we're going to step our right foot backward. Pelvis facing that front edge, we're going to tighten up from our knee all the way up to the hip. We're going to pull our core in and lengthen our spine chest up. And with all that firmness and action and attention, pelvis staying forward, we come forward, we don't let it pull back because we accept the fact that our hamstrings short, lengthening. It's okay, our thighs, we're just trying to convince them to stay tight. Keep that pelvis forward. These are all muscles doing that action. Keep long, that's all muscle effect. We're just trying to get our muscles to react. And then the second part of this is we bend that knee, we bring our hands down the leg. And we just come to a very mild stretch. That's also a muscle back there that's stretching. So we just tilt into it. We make it adjustable. We make sure that we're doing what's comfortable and easy enough for us to do. And then staying like this is per perfectly fine. If you want to venture hands forward, eventually lifting the leg and stretching that leg upward, that is okay. We're breathing very deeply. But this time, we're going to put the right foot down, not next to the left foot. We're going to put it back down where it was. We're going to lower that heel down. We're going to bend both knees and put our hands on our knees and belly tight. We're going to come upward. Now the knees stay a little bit bent, that left knee over the ankle. We're not in a very deep pose. We're going to tighten our seat muscles. Pushing those heels down helps us find the back of our leg. Pulling in the core, nice and firm. Lifting up the chest, those heels press down. A very slight tucking under of the tailbone. Chest lifting, that right hand can point down the leg, the left arm can reach upward. Press down, lift up, that's good enough, but if you wanted a little bit of a backward tilt, don't jam your back, pull the belly in. Get the seat muscles active, take a deep breath, and then we're just gonna step on the left leg to come out of it. Okay, let's do our second side. So, left leg, that's gonna step backward pelvis faces the front edge of the mat. We're tightening our thighs from the knee to the hip. We're pulling in the core. We're lengthening our spine. Thighs tight, long spine, back in its neutral curve. Pelvis facing front when we start forward. We try and convince thighs to stay active, front of the body to stay long. We're just bending to mild stretch. We're just trying, the fight is to maintain everything else about the pose. It's, it's that simple. There's only one part of the pose is actually the stretch of the back of the leg. The rest of the pose is everything we're holding on to in action. And now we bend the right knee, we bring our hands down that leg, there we are. And now we're again simplifying things, so it's just a stretch in this right leg that we adjust by the bend or the straightness of our knee. We're making things very comfortable. And then we're gonna take our arms out wider and further forward, and maybe we just transfer weight. Maybe we never pick the left foot up, or maybe we do. Or maybe we stretch that left leg up, and of course everything has to be modified to what this side, this leg, this stretch, this ability is. Breathing deeply. But now we're going to rest that foot back, just sort of where it was, just coming down. We're moving ourselves backward. We're bending our knees, hands to our knees, belly tight. We're coming up all the way, but then we're going to push those heels down into the floor, engage the back of the leg. We're going to pull in that core, pelvis still facing front. We're going to tuck that tailbone under just a little bit. We're going to lift up the chest. And if we want that left hand goes down the leg, the right arm goes up, and we can just press those heels, tuck the tailbone, pull the belly in, seat muscles tight and lengthen, or maybe a tiny bit. But you got to keep long. You don't jam. You don't untuck the tailbone. Take a deep breath. And then on an exhale, we step onto that right leg, and we just come out of that position. That's a lot of action. And now we're going to sit down. And you'll be happy to go, oh, sit down. We're going to do a little bit of a stretch for our neck and our shoulder. 
we're going to come into a position that allows us to, uh, to do a little bit of that stretching action. And so I'm going to turn us into a kneeling position. And so you can double at your mat under your knees to stretch our shoulder. We're still nicely warmed up, and so the stretch will do very well. We're going to be in a tabletop position, hands under the shoulders. Uh, if, you're, if your wrists hurt you, the hands can be a little more forward. That puts less pressure on the most tender part of the wrist. Chest forward and hips back. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our left hand, and we're just going to, first time we do it, we're just going to bring it across our body. Now, it could be very close, or I can walk it further away. And once I get into what seems ideal, I'm pushing on the right, I'm leaning toward the left, and then I'm sinking backward toward my heels, and my left ear it can come all the way down, and we're in a stretch. Now, this stretch could be strong, could be soft. You're just keeping it very reasonable and very comfortable in what you're doing. Deep breathing. And that's good. We use the right hand to help us. We come toward the right and we come back into our tabletop just as we were before. And then chest forward, hips back. We're going to take our right hand. We're going to bring it under us. Now it could be close and further away. And then once we've done that, we, uh, we sort of lean toward the right and we Come back toward the heels, and the right ear turns toward the mat, and we're in this stretch, and it could be very different on one side versus the other. So it's stretching into the ribs and into the shoulder blade, and into the shoulder itself. Just make it work for you, breathing deeply. And then we use that left arm to help us and come back up again, and we're going to do it with a little bit. Now, we could just always do the stretch straight across the body. But there's another little bit of stretch that we can do. So I'm going to take the left hand now, instead of going straight across, which is an option, I'm going to begin to angle it and reach it in the direction of my feet, bringing my left shoulder all the way down and my left ear comfortably down. Now my right hand, I'm going to keep near my body. And ever so gently, I'm going to lift my right shoulder above my left shoulder. Now my weight is toward my heels, so I don't have any weight on my head. We're just breathing deeply. And this is definitely a, a potentially stronger stretch. So you might just have your arm off to the side and not down toward your feet. Take a deep breath and pushing onto both palms, we'll be able to lean to the right to come up and take ourselves out of that. Now we'll do the other side. So it starts off from the tabletop and the right hand is gonna be reaching and we're gonna move it toward the feet and the right shoulder comes down and the right ear comes down. But I don't have weight on my head, I have it toward my heels. I uh, lift that left elbow upward and lift that left shoulder up, just sort of pushing myself a little bit toward the right not in an unpleasant way, hips toward the heels, always keeps the pressure off my head. We take a deep breath in. And then we use both arms to bring ourselves slowly up and then out of that. And that's great. Okay, great. Now we will release the shoulders a little bit. Let's come on to our back, which of course the body has been waiting for us to make that one come in. So on to our back we go. And as we recline on our back, we do a little more work, so don't let the body get too happy about being on its back. <laughs> We've got a little bit more work for it. Uh, bring your knees one at a time in toward the chest. My stretch for the shoulders is to, uh, to make a loop. And you know, if the loop, if I can grab my wrists or, or only my fingers, and if I can't grab that and have that space around the legs, and I can just hold the legs to try and keep a solid loop. Because what I want to do right now is once I've made that loop, is push my legs up in to the arms. And as you can see, that's pulling my shoulders up. My head stays back. What a nice stretch to the back of the shoulders. I like a little bit of side to side rocking in that too. Breathe deeply and then release. Now I had one arm grabbing the other in that. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and switch sides, put that around my legs again, and push up into those arms. And create another stretch, that head stays backward. Our back is flattening. We're breathing deeply and we let that release. Now, we're going to keep our right leg into our chest and we're going to stretch our left leg out. Now, the idea would be that I press the back of my left knee down so that I'm feeling the release here in the front of the hip, but at the same time, my, my right leg position allows me to flatten my back on the floor. So I want our back flat and I want us to press that left knee down to create the nice little releasing action here. Now, point the toes of that left foot. And working slowly, just bring that left leg slowly up. Very nice and slow. Now, it's going to feel very heavy. And I want you to do your best to keep your back flat. And the leg's going to come slowly, slowly, slowly up as you continue to breathe deeply. You're going to bring the leg all the way up to the point that you're feeling a stretch in the back of the leg. And with the knee and the foot in this angle, it's stretching 
pulse, the outer and the inner sides of the hamstring. And we're going to slowly, slowly back, staying flat, lower the leg back down again. Now, this is using our hip flexor, part of our core, but it's also using our abdominal muscles to keep our back flat. Again, a little help with this leg, this right leg into the chest. Now, once my leg is all the way down, I'm going to turn my hips so my knee and foot are turned slightly outward. It's not a big turn, but I'm also going to point the toes. So my knee and my hip are pointed outward, my back is flattening, and I'm starting to bring the leg back up again. This is going to isolate to the inner thigh as well as the front of the thigh. It feels pretty strong. Breathing deeply as we slowly bring the leg up. Oh, my body wants to lift that leg faster than I'm lifting. Keeping the toe pointed and taking it all the way to the point with my knee and my foot slightly turned out, and I'm now getting a stretch in a different part of the hamstring region. And then keeping that angle, that knee and that foot turned out, we're gonna slowly be rolling the leg back down. If you need to make modifications or bend your knee or go faster, okay, you totally get that. Breathe deeply, so just do as much of this, it seems reasonable. The leg comes all the way down. Now we're gonna turn so the knee and foot are Turn slightly inward, the back is still flat and the toe is still pointed and we start to bring it back up. And this influences us to get not only the quad, but a little bit of this outer hip region. So slowly trying to keep the back flat, come upward. Flattening the back influences the body to use the uh, hip flexors even more. We take it up and there's a very different part of that hamstring region closer to the inner knee. It might be brought to the stretch. And then we, with that inward turn of the leg, are bringing the legs slowly back down again. This is another example of how, you know, fighting to keep the back flat and work very slowly and smoothly. Well, that's us working to make the body do something it wouldn't ordinarily want to do. We come all the way down, we're going to switch sides. The left knee's going to come into us, the right leg's going to straighten. And the first pass with the right leg is just the toe pointed, the knee is, and the foot are in the neutral angle, the back is flat, and then we're trying to press the back of our right knee down. So that's our starting position. And then very slowly, we're taking that right leg up. And the back is flattening, and we're just slowly coming up, breathing deeply. And you know, one side could be a lot different than the other side, especially when we're going really slow. Our core is already tired. So we come slowly up, and we just bring it to the point where the hamstring is getting a little bit of a stretch there. Breathing deeply, back still flat, and then very slowly, leg in the neutral line. We're coming slowly down. I think my body resists me more when it knows what's going to happen next. So it says, oh yeah, you're going to do two more of these, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to turn the foot and the hip and the knee outward. So the turn out of the leg, knee straight, back flat, and then start to bring the leg up with the toe pointed. And it's influencing me to work that inner thigh as well as the front of the leg. Oh, we're breathing deeply. Our back is flat. We're coming upward. And with the continued turn out of the hip, the, uh, the portion of the hamstring is brought into the stretch a little bit more, one region, that outer region more than the inner region. And we slowly re-lower that. Through to architecting our body, we're, we're telling our body what we want to do, what muscles we want to use, what areas we want to stretch, just with the angles and the posture and our strong mind body control. We know it's hard to do. We get all the way down, we turn the legs so the hip and the knee are turned inward, we flatten the back, and we start to bring it with that turn of the leg coming slowly up. You can feel some of the little outer hip region as well as the front of the thigh. As we have the inward turn hip slowly coming up, back flattening, breathing deeply, take it to the point where it's like, oh my goodness, I can't miss some stretch right there. And then we slowly flat the leg, staying in that turned in position. Oh, breathing deeply. And finally, our leg is all the way down. And so good news, we're just going to bend the knees. We're going to place our feet on the mat nice and wide. Arms out to the sides. And we start to rock to the right and the left side of the pelvis will roll up and the legs will fold into this really nice hip flexor front of the thigh stretch. Shoulders stay down. We're going to tilt up and across to the left. And then the right side is going to be lifting a little bit in the front of the thigh and hip. Everyone's a little different about the way how far their legs go one side versus the other, but it's a really good stretch. It's really good action. Keep the breath deep in the belly. We've done a lot of things today, so we're, we're using up oxygen. We're creating a recipe that's probably got a little bit of lactic acid, a little bit of oxygen debt in the body, so use your breathing nice and strong. Deep into the belly, slow exhales. 
We get a little more release by coming to center. And I want to bring our feet and knees together. And I'm going to ask you to loop your left leg over the right and just going side to side. Now the foot staying down is one version of this. And I think it's really good because it, uh, it keeps the weight of the leg off the body and allows for some slight adjustments. But if you preferred, you could lift the feet up with the knees in the cross, but you kind of keep your shoulders down. Don't just flop to the side. Keep the shoulders down. That works the, uh, the oblique muscles. And of course, limit is what the hip is feeling and what the pelvis and the low back are feeling. So you're just doing, it could be toe down. If you just don't want that toe down, you keep a lot of weight off the body and you'd still be getting under a nice twist. Now we're going to come to center with it, and, uh, and our right leg is going to drape over the left, and the, the left foot down method is a really great one. I like to start it because uh, it lets me know um, what might release if I were just a little softer, a little gentler, and then if I wanted to bring my legs up, I can go side to side, and I feel the difference. I get a little more range of motion, and the fight is to keep the shoulders down, so I know the back of my chest, the, the lats are working, the posterior deltoid, other muscles working to keep my chest and rib cage down. So good, uh, good yoga practice, good activity is, is a full body action, not just the one area that might have the focus of the attention because it's in the stretch or the action. Full body together. So we go side to side, we un unloop those legs, we're gonna stretch our legs, walk them out. Just wobble the hips in and out a few times, it's a really great way to release tension. Shimmy by reaching one side longer and the other side longer. That shimmy is happening in the side of the waist as we pull the pelvis up toward the rib cage, one side and then the other side. A real great way for us to create a release in the back of the pelvis, the sacroiliac joint. So we do that a few times. We deliberately tense the seat muscles and let them go, which is a nice spreading open in the front of the pelvis structure. Uh, unless you turn your hips inward, again, the contraction is different. It's harder to get, a little more focused devotion to that contraction with the legs turned in. We release that, feet naturally turn outward. We inhale, arching our back up, and then we exhale and we flatten and we pull. We try and make that belly go hollow bowl. We do that again, we inhale, we arch. And exhale, we flatten and we pull in. And then we release all that, the back will be nice and neutral. Walk your shoulders away from head toward hips. Broaden the back of the chest, wobble the head a little bit, turn the arms inside of the elbows and palms, face upward. Take a deep breath, make everything tight, and then exhale and go, well, suddenly limp and relax. And I want you to exhale completely. We're gonna do a little bit of a breathing technique. So exhale completely. On your next inhale, I want you to breathe in your belly and sides, all the way up to the underarms, into the lower part of your back, the shoulder blade part of your back, your collarbone, six more air in there. And then exhale slowly and just go limp again. But your next breath in, I'd like you to count the number of seconds that you're breathing in for. Try and breathe in as deeply as you can. And then I'd like you to count the number of seconds that you're breathing out for. Breathe out slowly. And at the end of the breath outward, pull in that belly. Just try and get more of that air to exhale. And we'll do it again. You're trying to relax enough that the breath in can fit into all sorts of spaces. You're just taking your time with it. Belly area, sides of the ribs, lower back, shoulder blades, collarbones. Make your clothes tight. And then the exhale is slow, 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 slow. There it is. Just let that exhale go away. And pull that, all that reserve air into it. Whatever number you're getting as far as the number that you're counting for your inhale, it's okay. And whatever number you're creating for your exhale, it's okay. But you know, if we relax, we're gonna find that the breath in, the amount of time that we're spending with it grows. And that means there's more inflation in the lung structure, more filling up with those tiny little great light clusters in our lungs called alveoli. More transfer of the air because we're increasing the pressure so the oxygen crosses that cell bar barrier even better. And when we spend more time with the exhale, more of that carbon dioxide is leaving, more of the used air is being exhausted when we pull in the belly and make that full exhale. And this is probably one of the most simple deep breathing techniques we can do. And it's a great recovery breath, a great relaxation because it's activating 
the vagus nerve complex producing parasympathetic reactions of relaxation. It's simple. If you get troubled with it in any way, you just go to your normal breathing. You don't worry about it. You just breathe in deeply and exhale slowly, 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 slowly. And when you're ready to, you begin to move just a little bit, fingers and toes. Make those movements happen slowly and gently. Start to move your shoulders and your ribs and your wrists and elbows and ankles and knees. And you begin to stretch in whatever way suits you. Once you stretch, you're just gonna roll to one side or the other. And it doesn't matter, each side is perfectly fine. Knees are bent sort of on your side, you're still breathing nice and deep. And when you're ready to, you're gonna bring yourself up into a seated position. You're just taking your time. You're just gonna sit there. It's, it's a good sign if you're a little bit, you know, uh, quiet afterwards, relaxed, tired. You take your time, you spend as much time as you like in this. 